Now we begin working on our second process, which will work in tandem with prospect tracking. Now we'll review the business case for that process, daily customer wins. The new prospect records are now populated in, into the tracking database, and we want to continually check against the database for any recently modified records which have been changed to closed one. We want to update the Salesforce record, changing the Accounts Records Service Level Agreement, or SLA, from its current value to gold. Once the account record has been updated in Salesforce, an email is sent to a designated team member, alerting them of the change status. Finally, the database customer record will be updated to reflect the notification email that was sent. So let's think about how we'll build our second process called Daily Customer Wins. The first branch will handle the querying of the database for any modified customer records. If modified records exist, we want to update the Salesforce account records to SLA agreement of gold. Then we want to email monitoring user information about new customer records, and we want to update the database system indicating emails have been sent. The goal for the first part of our daily customer wins process is to query the database to see if there's any updated records. To do this, we need to designate the start shape as our database connector and configure the database operation. As displayed, the database operation can be viewed as a container for your statement definition. The profile section allows you to statically or dynamically define read statements against tables or stored procedure outputs. You can use the import wizard to dynamically pull tables and auto list the columns with field types. The operation also defines the grouping options, which ultimately determine how the SQL response records will be returned as one to many documents. The link element is an optional field which specifies the common in a record group to batch into documents. It is common to group the records where the primary key is unique per each document. For instance, we can set the link element to customer underscore ID since it has a unique record identifier returned in our statement. The batch count allows you to define an interval for the grouping behavior. Here we're using one because we want one unique customer ID per document. This allows us to send documents to other validation logic where each step can be analyzed independently. The max rows setting allows you to limit the maximum number of rows to return to a single read. So this is common in large data migrations with performance concerns. You can read in limited sets of data and flag them as completed using a uh, database write command to prevent them from being picked up during the next execution. The default of zero here is going to mean all. I'm going to walk through exercises 16 through 18. Exercise 16 is going to be create a database read process. Exercise 17, set a database runtime parameter. And exercise 18 is going to be test the process. The following exercises deal with our second process daily customer wins, which builds a notification process and sets flags in both Salesforce and the database to complete the account record synchronization. So the first thing we're going to do is create a subfolder to house the database read process. So if we click the drop down arrow next to the developer one course, we can add a new folder. And this folder is going to be named daily customer wins. And you're seeing since we added it to the developer one folder, it's on the same level as the prospect tracking folder that we created in our last process. The next thing we're going to do is download the process from the process library. So we're going to browse the process library, search processes. We're going to enter in dev one, and we want to pull up our daily customer wins process. Again, we do not want to pull the solution one. So daily customer wins, and we want to install. We're choosing the installation location, developer one, daily customer wins, and we're going to install. All right, so the installation was complete. So we can go back to our, our library or we can close this out. You can see now our daily customer wins. We can expand. We'll have the process itself for daily customer wins and we'll have connectors. So we'll have our mail connector. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder to house all of our connections. So under the Boomi training, we're going to click on the down arrow and we're going to add a new folder. So under our Boomi training, we're going to add a new folder. It's going to be hashtag or pound connections and hit save. So now you're going to see on the same level as our developer one course it are, is a connection folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull all of our um, current connections that we have and we're going to pull that into the folder. So it's going to be our Boomi training Salesforce uh, and our mail connection and our Boomi training MySQL. So if we open up our developer one, we can open up our connectors, our mail connector and connection, and we're just going to drag and drop our connections into that folder. So 
So now you'll see our connections folder. We have all of our connectors and all of our um, pre-configured connections. So I pulled the mail connector from our daily customer wins and then both of our, our database connection and our Salesforce connection from prospect tracking. After we do that, we're gonna actually open up our daily customer wins process and we're gonna configure the database start shape. So we can double click on here. It is a connector. It's gonna be a database connector. The action is git and we're gonna choose our Boomi training MySQL connection. So connection, Boomi training MySQL. Again, we moved all of our connections into our connections folder. So that's where we're going for it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the operation. operation. We're gonna click create and we're gonna name it query customer by date. Next to the profile field, we're gonna click create a new profile. And in the name window for the database profile, we're gonna enter query customer by modified date. And then we're gonna click on that statement. And then we're gonna, going to click on the import feature in the upper right corner, so that blue import button, and open that database import wizard. So browsing in our Boomi cloud, and we're gonna choose our MySQL or my training SQL connection, Boomi training MySQL, and we're gonna hit next. So here, when the tables load, we're gonna choose the customer table and click next. And we're gonna select three fields. We're gonna select the customer underscore ID, we're going to select the name and we're going to select the phone. So these are the three fields that we're selecting for it. And we're going to hit next. And if we hit finish on success, now if you see under the fields, you're going to have your customer ID, your name, and your phone. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our SQL scripting to how it appears in your activity guide. So again, once you've finished your SQL script, so select distinct customer underscore ID, name, and phone from customer where modified date is greater than or equal to and user underscore ID equals your name. So again, my, my example from the last exercise was Boomi Trainer. Uh, other ones we used were John, John S. Um, but whatever you used in the last process is what you're referencing for user ID. The company key equals 59 and notify status equals zero. So in the, next, in the left window next to parameters, we wanna click the blue drop down arrow and we wanna add a parameter. So now you're seeing this parameter. The parameter name is going to be modified underscore date is greater than or equal to. Under the data format options, it's going to be date and time. And we're going to save and close that. And then you're gonna see under the grouping options, we're going to select a link element. It's going to be statements fields, customer ID, okay. The batch count is going to be one and the max rows are going to be zero. And then we're gonna save and close and click okay. So that was exercise 16. Now we're going to do exercise 17, which is setting a database runtime parameter. We want to set an, a dynamic input parameter on the start shape to populate the database parameter in the SQL query. This ensures the database records are gonna be returned and are unique uh, and then are inserted in the desired time frame. So you can see on our start shape, we have parameters zero or one of set. So we can either click on that to take us to our parameters that we need to set, or you can double click on your start shape and tab over to parameters. Either way works to get there. So we are going to add a new parameter. So click on the plus arrow to add. The input type is going to be a date and time, or it's gonna be a modified date. The type is going to be date and time. The date mask, and make sure in your date mask, it's appearing just the way it does in your guide. So it's actually gonna be this one down here. One of the things you can do is you can either scroll down and find it, or you can begin to enter it. So if I began to enter, and you could find whichever date mask you need. And the date type is going to be a relative date of minus one days. So we're gonna click okay. We're gonna click okay. We are going to save the process. And then what we're going to do is exercise 18. We're going to test the process. So it's time to test the process, see if the two database records were successfully retrieved. A Boomi best practice is to continually test your process at various stages throughout the development. We're gonna click on test in the upper right of the process canvas. Select our test atom cloud, and we're gonna run our test. Now that our 
process finished testing, you can see that our start shape returned two documents and we can look at the connection data. You can see we have our gene point, the gene point name, the account ID that was created that had the last four of the phone number as part of it. And then we'll have our edge communications the same way. Now it's your turn to complete exercises 16 through 18.